Well, nearly half of the U.S. wheat crop is exported, and much of it is carried to ports by railways. RFD-TV's Sarah Mogg visits with one of BNSF's top executives. Well, trade is top of the agenda for wheat growers here in Washington, and their partners are stepping up to help support them in requesting their priorities from lawmakers. Uh, we're lucky enough to be joined today by Greg Guthrie, the director of agricultural products at BNSF Railroad, one of those partners. Greg, when your uh, organization decided to participate today, what, what's the goal of supporting wheat growers? Well, I think, you know, uh, clearly uh, agricultural products, wheat, corn, soybeans, uh, overall are a very important part of our, our, of our portfolio. And uh, particularly particularly when you look at the geography of our railroad, the importance of wheat across Montana, North Dakota, uh, and down through the Southern Plains, uh, it's, it's an important product for us. Uh, historically, we're, we haul somewhere between 50 and 60 percent of all the wheat in the United States is moved by rail. So it's a very, very critical piece of our portfolio. And whatever we can do to help support that industry uh, creates more for us to haul. Well, what was the reaction to BNSF when, when they heard, you know, with the possible impacts on agriculture of, of something like renegotiating NAFTA? Well, I think, you know, clearly, uh, you know, trade with Mexico is, is also an important part of our portfolio, not just for ag, but, but for many products. And, and similar situation uh, with Canada. We, we actually have lines that move into Canada. So trade, uh, particularly when you look at our business, trade uh, in agriculture is extremely important as well as uh, international trade, uh, we, you know, our largest carload uh, volume is actually international containers. Could you talk a little bit about how the, the, the relationship between the railroad and ag has, has kind of evolved over the years? I think what we've seen over the last, uh, particularly the last 10 years uh, for, for our company, for example, uh, we've really made a much more concerted effort to reach out and, and engage directly with producers. Uh, historically, uh, railroads don't engage with producers. They're not considered freight payers, so you know most railroads were dealing with commercial grain companies or others. So, in our in our engagement, increased engagement with the producer community, what we found is a lot of honest and honest interchange of information that I think all helps dispel a lot of the myths about transportation. They also spend a lot of time educating us about their needs, their their wants, their concerns. How do you see that? that uh, relationship further evolving. What, what kind of steps are you taking to, to kind of interact more with the ag community? Well, I think our presence at this event, for one thing, is just emblematic of, of our approach. Um, and we continue, again, our uh, engagement at a really high level with, with multiple producer organizations. Absolutely. Well, a lot to chew on there. Again, thanks to Greg Guthrie for joining us here today at NOG's Winter Conference. Uh, they're here in Washington, D.C., talking to policymakers about their priorities for 2018. We'll have more updates for you throughout the week from here in Washington. Until then, back to you in the studio. Well, the Association of American Railroads says 35% of rail industry revenue is directly linked to international trade. That's why the railroads warrant withdrawing from NAFTA would be devastating for the industry.